Okay, good morning everybody in Hazak Baru. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Tuesday morning as we are studying together Perashat Hukat. And our Perasha deals of course with the famous episode of the Para Aduma. The Para Aduma, the red heifer. What is it? Basically, if you have a person who is Tameh, who is impure, and they need to become pure, and the reason of their impurity was because they came in contact with a dead body. So the Torah tells us, the way that they become tahor pure is by having uh, having ashes of a red cow sprinkled upon them. And the, this is the episode that is in the beginning of our parasha. Of course, it's not it doesn't take up the entirety of our parasha. Our parasha deals with a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot is going on in this week's parasha. Um, Miriam's death is in this week's parasha. Aharon's death is in this week's parasha. So we have to hopefully get to that throughout the week. But I would like to talk today a little bit about this episode of the Paraduma and share with you something that we've spoken about in the past, but I don't think we could ever speak about it enough. And that is the episode of uh, par- of the, um, the Paraduma through lens of the Be'er Yosef. So take a look, Rabotai. And says the Be'er Yosef. Well, what is the Pasuk there? Let's first read the Pasukim. Zot hukat ha-Torah. Says God to, tell, to Moshe and Aharon, this is the law of the Torah that God is commanding. Tell the Jewish people that they should bring a para aduma, a red cow, temima, that's pure. Asher Babum would know doesn't have any blemish. Asher lo ala aleha ol, it never carried a yoke. Untatem uh, otale lazar kohen, he should bring it to El Azar and he should uh, slaughter it. He should take from its blood and sprinkle it and burn the cow, take from its ashes, and mix it with some wood, and etc., etc. Now, this is the, again, this is the ceremony of the Paraduma, and this is eventually what we use to sprinkle on people, and it lasts for a very long time. You don't need to kill a cow for every guy, okay? It's not like, uh, you know, eating meat. You kill, you know, every day cows are being killed. This is one time, and it lasts for many, 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 many years. Now, right away, I'm sure you noticed that the word and the name of our parasha is Hukat. Parashat Hukat. What does it mean, Huka? Huka, we know, is a law, but it's not just a law. There's other ways to say law, right? You know, there's a, a mishpat is a law. What's the difference between a hok and a mishpat? A dut. A hok, we know, is a mitzvah that the reason is hidden from us. So as an example, I want you to think of a mitzvah that's very rational. Try to think of one. Which mitzvot makes sense? The reason is very clear. Respect your parents. That's, I think, very obvious. Um, Giving charity. Don't kill. Don't steal. These are very obvious mitzvot. Then you have mitzvot that are a little bit harder to understand. These are called hokim. A hok, a hok is a mitzvah that we don't really know why I have to do it. It doesn't really make sense. So as an example, there are many hokim. I'm sure if I ask you to think of some, think of a hok. Right? Why can't I eat certain animals? Why are they not kosher? Right? Sha'at nez. Why can I wear wool and linen together? Why can't I shave with a blade? Why can't I cut certain parts of my head? Right? Okay, these are hukim. Our parasha says, Zot hukat Torah. This is the quintessential hook. What we're about to study today is the ultimate hook, the most uh, obscure, unfathomable mitzvah in the whole Torah is the para aduma. Take a look at what Rashi says. Lefisha Satan monineth Israel because you have Satan and the nations of the world taunting us. Lomar ma mitzvah azot. What kind of foolish mitzvah is this? Umatam yesh, but doesn't make any sense. How does it make sense that if you're impure and I sprinkle red ashes, all of a sudden you become pure? Doesn't have any, you know, rationale. You should go take a shower if you're unclean. Just having ashes thrown on you, what does that matter? But therefore the Torah writes, Hukah, 
It's a decree that I have in front of me. And in lecharishut leharher ahareha. You have no right to question it. You have no right to criticize it. Says God, Zot hokat haTorah. Don't ask any questions. This is it. This is the mitzvah. This is the hok. Okay. Well, this is the hok of the Torah. And um, okay, it sounds like there's nothing to talk about. The obvious question is, what makes this more of a chok than any other chok? That Rashi needs to say, this is the most important chok. This is the classic chok. Though I think all chokim don't make sense. Why does this not make sense more than the others? So of course we know right away that something special about the para duma is that not only does it purify those that were impure, but the guy himself who is doing the purification process, the Kohen, he becomes impure. That's the question. That's the paradox. You see, Paraduma, even to Shlomo HaMelech didn't make sense. Shlomo HaMelech, even the Chukim, and we have to realize, by the way, the Chukim do have a reason. It's not like there's no reason. The reason, there is. Matter of fact, Moshe Rabbeinu was told the secret to every single one of them. God told him the secrets to all the chukim. But one hok was kept hidden, and that is the para aduma. Para aduma, God didn't reveal. And Shlomo HaMelech says, Amarti ehkema, vehire hokam meni. I thought I was smart. I thought I figured it out. I thought I had sense, and I was able to make clarity from everything. And then I got to this, and I realized, oh boy. Back to the drawing board. I, uh, this is too, this is way above my pay grade, says Ahara, says uh, Shlomo HaMelech. So Paraduma carries with it a paradox that was not solvable even to the smartest of all men. Shlomo HaMelech couldn't figure it out. And the Ber Yosef of a year comes along, Rav Yosef Tzvi Salant, with an amazing, amazing chidush. And he asks the obvious question. He says, well, I understand that it is a chok, and I understand why it's the greatest chok, but I just want to know, says the Beit Yosef, why did God make chukim to begin with? What's the point of a chok? Meaning, there is a reason, right? The reason, God knows it, and He revealed, He's, got, he's going to reveal it to us at the end of time, so why keep it from hidden from us today? What do we gain by not knowing? All you're doing is giving ammunition to the goyim to make fun of us. Now the goyim read this and they say, Ah, oh, foolish Jews, you guys don't know anything. Instead, if you told us the reason, we would be able to, to explain it to the goy when he asks. And then the goyim says, Wow, look at you guys, your Torah is so amazing. I want to convert, I want to be Jewish. Isn't that the point of the Torah? To inspire the non-Jews? To inspire the world? To bring people closer to God? But when you put obscure mitzvot, they don't bring them closer. So why didn't Hashem tell us the reason? Why is Hashem keeping us in the dark? Explains the Be'er Yosef with an amazing answer. And he says that ultimately, the reason para aduma, which doesn't make sense, doesn't make sense. The reason Hashem kept it that way is because in life, there are going to be things that also don't make sense. We are going to come across situations in our lives, not only mitzvot that don't make sense, but there will be, throughout our spiritual odyssey in this world, there will be things that we scratch our heads and wonder, why? Why do the righteous suffer? Why do the wicked, wicked prosper? Why do good things happen to bad people? Why do bad things happen to good people? It doesn't make sense. How come little children have to get hurt? How come people that are so pure? Why this one? Why that one? How come bad people get away with things? We look at the world today and it seems to be that there's no justice. Tzadik Veralo is a question that every one of us is bothered by. It bogs our mind. Not only us. Moshe Rabbeinu was bothered by this. When Moshe saw God on the mountain, and of course he didn't see physically God, but when he had a certain vision of God, the only thing that he asked God is, I want to understand why Tzadik Viral. How come the world seems to be backwards? Seems to be unfair. There seems to be 
moments in life that are unfair. Life has unfair days, moments, weeks, years, whatever it is. And says the Be'er Yosef, to prepare us for the unfairness of life. God gave us chukim. God gave us specifically the chok of paraduma. Chok hakakti, gezera gazarti. Says the says the says our rabbis, there will be things in life that don't make sense. It's a chok. It's a gezera. Ve'en lecha reshut le'ahera hareha. It's not for us to wonder why. It's not for us to question why. It's not our job. We have to realize and understand that life is filled with mysteries. And the Paraduma prepares us for these mysteries. In the year 1244, 24 wagon loads of Jewish Torah books, Torahs, uh, Jewish books, uh, scrolls were burned in the city of France. And the rabbis of the community at the time did what's called a she'elat shalom, a she'elat chalom. They tried wondering, why, what is God doing this for? They asked a question in a dream. I'm not sure exactly how this works, but they asked the she'elat chalom to try to get a little bit clarity. And in the dream, the answer that was given from above was zot chukat hatora. These are chukim. Just like mitzvot, not all of them make sense. Life, not all of it makes sense. And to prepare us for this answer, God gave us chukim. You know, when a little kid is in school, a little kid says to his teacher, Rebbe, what's the reason that, that we have to, you know, eat korban Pesach? He says, oh, I have an answer. When God, he took us out of Egypt, he jumped over. Ah, beautiful. Rebbe, what's the reason that I have to respect my... He says, oh, you have to respect your parents. They gave you life. Oh. Then they get Paraduma. He says, Rebbe, what's the reason for this? Why do I have to... Why ashes all of a sudden help? Why the guy... You know what the Rebbe says? The Rebbe says, good question. That one we don't know. You know what happens that day when the kid goes home? The mom says to the kid, so what did you learn in school today, son? What did you learn today in school, daughter? And the kid says, well, today we learn that some things we don't understand. Today we learn that not everything makes sense. And now this kid is trained. Already from young, not everything is explainable. There are mysteries of life. The mysteries of life we don't always have answers for. And then, not only the mitzvot, mitzvot are easy, okay, you do it. But real mysteries, real problems, real difficulties in life, people go through real crisis. And, and over the year, the person now already has it in their dictionary. This is another mystery that I don't understand. Chukim, paraduma, instill in us the lessons that life sometimes has things that we just have to swallow. You know, there was once a Rebbe that in his lifetime was able to uh, pray and remove all the decrees against the Jews of that community. And when the Rebbe passed away, the students were more confident and, and secure, realizing that now that the rabbis in Shamaim were going to be even more protected, because now we have an inside man upstairs in heaven praying for us. Of course, right after the Rebbe passed away, the decrees against the Jews only started to worsen. And there were more pogroms and more attacks. And the Jews couldn't understand it. And, and they were crying and praying, Hashem, where are you? What happened to the Zechut of the Rabbi? And finally the Rabbi came in the dream to the Talmudim and he said, You're probably wondering why I'm not praying for you anymore. And I'll tell you, when I was down there on the, in the world, I saw all the bad things that the Goyim were planning against us. And so I prayed that Hashem shouldn't send them. But now that I'm in the Olam HaEmet, now that I'm in the real world, I realize how every one of those attacks, some way, somehow, was for the best of the Jewish people. I dare not pray for Hashem to remove them. 
So the vision, the perspective that we have in this world is very limited. We don't always see, we don't always understand. Hashem knows the reason. Is there a reason 100%? Only He knows though. Just like the Chukim have a reason. Just like Parah Aduma has a reason. And you know what? Our rabbis tell us, Le'atid lavo. When Mashiach comes, all of the Chukim will be explained. Not only the Chukim of the Torah, my friends. The Chukim of the lives that we lived. The problems, the mysteries, the questions that we had. How come this happened to me? How come that one had to suffer? Where was the justice? How come they got away with it? And all of the Chukim will be explained. Le'atid lavo. Because on that day in the future, our rabbis tell us, Hashem echad echad. God will be one and His name will be one. There will be no more sadness. Everything, the curtain will be revealed. Everything will be clear. And therefore, all the questions will go away. We will no longer need the lessons of Parah Duma. The Be'er Yosef's Hidush, by the way, you should know, actually is already found in the Midrash. Midrash Tan Huma says, and this is brought by Rabbi Isaac Bernstein, he brings a Midrash Tan Huma. And the Midrash says, based on this first Pasuk, Ve'ikhu elecha para aduma temima asher bamul, says the Midrash, aduma is the nation of Babel, temima is the nation of Madai, Paras. In Bamum is the nation of Yavan, and Lo Al is the nation of Edom. And the Midrash over here is connecting the four exiles that a Jewish, as a Jewish nation, we had to endure historically, is putting it in the first pasuk. That's what the Midrash is doing. It's saying, Paraduma is the four Galuyot: Pavel, Madai, Yavan, Edom. Why is the Midrash doing that? What's the Midrash's point? You found me, well, anytime you find me four adjectives, you're going to now throw in the four uh, galuyot? The answer is no, 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 no. Says the Midrash, in here, in this pasuk, are the seeds of the Jewish people's history. The way we pass through and we survive, Pavel. Like, like many have said, no nation was persecuted more than the Jew. And yet the Jew is still here. The Jew still stands. We went through everything. We experienced Bavel, Madai, Yavan. We're in Edom. We've been persecuted. Every every other every other year, there's another thing going on somewhere in the world. When there's quiet, we're shocked. Where? How does the Jew find the strength, the fortitude, the resilience? The answer is Paraduma. The same way Paraduma, we study it, we keep it, even though it's irrational. The Jew is able to go through all the circumstances in life, never letting us, never letting things keep us down. And so our rabbis tell us the paraduma is metamete horim. By the way, beautiful idea here. We know our rabbis tell us certain mitzvot were given before the Torah was given to us. Yes, are you familiar with that one? Certain mitzvot we got before. The giving of the Torah. At a place, anyone know the name of the place? Mara. At Mara, we got certain mitzvot. Okay? One of the mitzvot our rabbis tell us was the mitzvah of Paraduma. Paraduma was given to us at Mara. Now remember, Mara is before we even got the Torah, it's before we built the Mishkan. Why would God need to give us the laws of Parah Duma before building the Mishkan? Anyways, it didn't take effect till we built the Mishkan. It didn't happen. It didn't matter until God gave it to us right after we built the Mishkan. But He gave it to us almost a year earlier at Mara. Why would God do that? And the answer, if what we're saying is true, the purpose of Parah Duma is not only for the red ashes and purifying impure people. But the message of the Paraduma is that as Jews, there are things that we will endure that no other nation will endure. And as a nation, we experience this. 
Who was the first nation to attack us when we left Misraim? Amalek. Amalek comes and attacks us. For what reason? What do we do wrong? It seems like we're just always getting blamed. We don't, we're not even near your land. What do you want from us? So God had to remind us before Amalek came at the place called Mara that sometimes life is Mar. Sometimes life is bitter. There will be Amaleks that will attack you. There will be people that hate you. There will be things in life that seem unfair. Know this, says God. Learn the para aduma. And remember that life sometimes carries with it questions. Life carries with it mysteries. If that's the case, now we understand just like the paraduma is metamete horim, just like the paraduma makes people that are pure impure and people that are impure pure, so to life is metamete horim. So to life has holy people sometimes that seem to be un un unfairly killed. They're metame. They get taken before their time. And if that's the case, we now understand why was para why is Chukah mentioned in this week's parasha? If Paraduma was given all the way back at Mara, why is it mentioned here? And the answer is because our parasha has in it the death of the holy Miriam. The death of the holy Aharon. And Miriam from the word Mara, from the word Marim, from the word bitter. Miriam's life. Miriam is the reason we were free. She's the one that made her parents go back together after they divorced to have Moshe Rabbeinu. She was the one that after Moshe was put in the water, followed him to see where he would wind up. She was the one that recommended to Batya that she should have a Jewish nurse and she brought her own mother. And Moshe was raised a Jew and he was given Jewish values in those very informative years of his life. She was the one later on that gave the Jewish people faith when they crossed Yam Suf. She was singing with the women. She was the one that always was there for the people. She was the one that was the, the, the giving us water. She gave us life. The Be'er of Miriam. And now Miriam should die before going into Israel? You explain to me, Rabbi, how is that fair? How is that just? She wanted to go into Israel more than Moshe, you should know. Everyone talks about Moshe. We forget about Miriam. She desired it more than him, our rabbis tell us. Where's the justice? Where's the fairness? And the answer is, says the parasha begins with Zot Chukat HaTorah. Our parasha begins with a chok with para aduma, understanding that sometimes in life the tehorim become tameh. Sometimes in life, people like Miriam are taken away from this world in, in a seemingly unfair manner. So now we understand, says the Be'er Yosef, everything that's going on in our parasha. We also, by the way, answer another question. Usually, historically, the para aduma was the Kohen Gadol's job. But who did the paraduma in our parasha? Second, third pasuk, untatem ota el Elazar kohen. All of a sudden, we're skipping Aharon. Why Aharon not doing it? Why are we giving it to Elazar? Says the Be'er Yosef, another gem. Because when was what when what day what was the date of the paraduma? When was this parasha given? The first paraduma was burned, like we said, Rosh Chodesh Nisan. And what else happened on Rosh Chodesh Nisan? A very tra it was a very tragic day. It was a very happy day because we built the Mishkan. But it was a very tragic day. It was the day that Aaron's two sons passed away. Nadav and Avihu. And Aaron, what was his take? What was his reaction? A normal reaction would have been bitterness, crying, anger. Aaron, the Pasuk says, Vayidom Aaron. He was quiet. He didn't ask any questions. Aaron understood that sometimes life has questions that we just don't understand, that we don't have the answers to. And God says to Aaron, if that's the case, you Aaron, you got it. You understand Paraduma. You don't need to burn its ashes. You lived it. You, you appreciate the, the, the power of sometimes 
the, mis the mysteries that life carries. That is all from the Be'er Yosef. So I think, I think, you know, again, in our lives, it doesn't go, it doesn't need to be said. There are many things that we are bothered with. There are many questions that we have. It seems to be that we're doing the right things and God somewhere, somehow is just ignoring us and we wonder, where's the fairness? God, aren't you fair? Paraduma reminds us, yes, yes, sometimes, just like in the Torah there are laws that we don't get so too life carries with it things that we just won't understand and we read the para aduma we read it every year right before Pesach we read it in the, in the moment that people are usually becoming Tahor when people are usually getting ash, uh, ashes sprinkled on them we're reminding the people, let's go, go get clean. We have Pesach. Today we don't have the Pesach. Today we don't have the Beit HaMikdash. But we still read it. Because although the purity and impurity of it maybe is not so relevant, but the concept, the reminder that life carries with it things that we just have to swallow, that we just have to uh, maybe just move on. Say, this is what Hashem wants. David HaMelech says in Tehillim, Zemirot hayuli hukecha Bebet Megurai. Says David, David Amelech, you should know, didn't have an easy life. David's life was filled with Megurai suffering. His life had in it things that were mysterious. People trying to kill him, people against him, people hating him. And David says, What's going on? What do I got to do? It just seems like whatever I do, there's always people that are against me. Whatever I do, there are people that are, wherever I turn, whether it's family or enemies, what's going on? David woke up every day wondering what's going to go wrong today. And David HaMelech gives us the answer. Zemirot hayuli hukecha. Your hukim were zemirot. God, David says, you know what happens when I get questions? I would study hukim. I would study the para aduma, and David would turn and open up and say, "What's going on over here? Why should I become all of a sudden tameh if I'm?" Well, I guess we don't understand, and this would be comfort to David Amelech. This would say, "Ah, if this I don't understand, but God gave it. God knows what He's doing. God is smart. So too in my life, there are things that I don't understand, and the same God gave me." those things. But in the future, our rabbis remind us, the day will come where every chok will be explained, where every circumstance will be explained, where every question in life will be explained. And on that day, we won't need the lesson anymore of the paraduma. We won't need any more the lessons of chukim because we're going to see clearly how everything in life that didn't make sense God's going to sit us down and He's going to explain it to us. From this world, it looks like it's bad. But then we get to the next world. We get to that day and we realize how really those moments, those decrees, those events, they looked horrible. But ultimately they were coming from a God who was loving. They were coming from HaGadosh Baruch Hu, who, who knows best, who knows more than us. And all of these um, moments in our lives are going to look back and be going to make sense. The mysteries of life uh, will be no longer. We pray that we should arrive at those days very, 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 very soon. Amen. Have a wonderful day. God willing, we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.